Pleased to be joined by the Acting Minister of Immigration. Pleased to be joined by the Acting Minister of Immigration, Alan Tudge, today. Uh, but before we go to today's announcement regarding uh, matters in Hong Kong, let me make a couple of comments about the continuing situation in Victoria. Again, I want to thank all Melbournians, all Victorians, for your patience and those who live in the border towns uh, along the New South Wales-Victoria border. I want to thank you for your patience in, uh, in managing what has, I'm sure, been a very disruptive last few days. What we're calling for uh, across uh, Victoria, particularly in Melbourne, but along those border town areas as well, is continuing patience as uh, issues settle in terms of the arrangements that are in place uh, for movement of people necessarily across those borders, uh, dealing with freight movements, things of that nature. I've spoken to, to the Victorian Premier again today. Um, around about 25,000 on average tests are being done every day in Victoria, and particularly obviously in those uh, key areas in Melbourne. Uh, that is an industrial scale of testing, which is an essential part of dealing with the outbreak uh, in Victoria. And uh, the Premier obviously made um, further comments today about the, the situation as it sits. Uh, presently, um, but I, I do want to thank uh, Victorians for how they're responding and uh, thank them for their continued patience. Uh, they know the drill. We all know the drill uh, when it comes to social distancing, um, making sure we wash our hands and, and uh, download the COVID Safe app and all of the necessary parts of uh, staying safe, COVID safe, in, in the community. And uh, I'd say more broadly across the country um, that we must guard against complacency. Uh, that we must continue to follow those social distancing protocols all around Australia, even in states or territories where uh, the number of cases is, is effectively zero. Uh, please don't think that uh, any of the states or territories are immune. Uh, and if there were to be issues that presented in any of those states and territories, the best defence that we have especially in the first instance, is that all citizens, all residents right across the country are continuing to practice uh, the appropriate social distancing and other measures. Um, we've seen um, the images uh, in many parts of the country where I think we are seeing some of that lax, and it's important because we do not want to see the situation in Victoria repeated in any other part of the country. Uh, the National Cabinet will meet tomorrow and obviously go over these issues once again. And so I would thank uh, all of those, particularly around border towns, um, as the New South Wales Premier has been stressing today to, if, to stay away from those border towns, uh, if, if that is something you can do and exercise that discretion, exercise that judgment, uh, that would include for family gatherings or things of that nature. Uh, I think it will assist everybody else who's involved in managing uh, the border there. Um, if the, they don't have an additional pressure or additional demand on them, that will certainly help them do their job and it will make uh, the circumstances for those in those border towns um, um, less stressing, although no doubt it will continue to be stressing for some days yet. So uh, a thank you again to everyone in Victoria and uh, a reminder uh, to everyone else around the country uh, against complacency to stay on our guard, uh, to be patient and to be conscientious. Uh, the purpose of, of being here today, though, is to make a number of announcements uh, that have been considered and agreed by the National Security Committee of Cabinet and, indeed, uh, by the Cabinet earlier this week. Uh, firstly, um, let me say that our government, together with other governments around the world, have been very consistent in expressing our concerns um, about the imposition of the national security law on Hong Kong. And today we have... Uh, agreed um, to announce that uh, that national security law constitutes a fundamental change of circumstances in respect to our extradition agreement with Hong Kong. And so Australia today has taken steps to suspend our extradition agreement. And we have formally notified Hong Kong and advised the Chinese authorities. I also note that uh, our travel advice for Hong Kong has been updated and would encourage Australians to refer to that travel advice. The other issue that we are addressing is one that, as a result of changes that have occurred in Hong Kong, that there will be citizens of Hong Kong who may be looking to move elsewhere, to start a new life somewhere else, to take
take their skills, their businesses um, and things that they've been running under the previous uh, set of rules and arrangements in Hong Kong and, and seek that opportunity elsewhere. Australia has always been a very welcoming country to such people from all around the world and our immigration system is the best in the world. It has the best controls, it has the best targeting, it has the best focus, and immigration as a result has been a pillar of the strength of our nation, not just our economy, but our society as well. We are a great immigration nation. I would argue we are the best. And uh, many countries uh, have learned from our success in managing immigration uh, in the national interest, and we will continue to do that. Uh, but our immigration program provides some particular opportunities for those uh, who have been li living as citizens in Hong Kong and around 10,000 or thereabouts uh, of uh, Hong Kong citizens and residents uh, are currently in Australia on student visas or on temporary work visas. What we've uh, uh, agreed to do is we've uh, agreed to adjust the policy settings to ensure that for skilled and graduate visa holders we'll be extending visas by five years from today with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of those five years. Now that means if you're a current or future student you will be able to stay for a total of five years once you've graduated with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of that period. Now, if you're a temporary graduate or skilled visa holder, your visa will be extended to provide an additional five years from today, uh, in addition to the time you've already been in Australia with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of that period. And we will also provide a five-year visa with a pathway to permanent residency for future Hong Kong applicants for temporary skilled visas subject to meeting... updated skills list and appropriate labour marking testing. Uh, we will also put uh, arrangements in place uh, to ensure we focus on Hong Kong applicants to start. to help address skill shortages in those areas with express pathways to permanent residency as already applies after three years. We will also look at new incentives and arrangements to attract export-orientated Hong Kong-based businesses to relocate to Australia, particularly where they have a strong potential for future growth and employment of Australians. So for existing temporary work visa holders, student visa holders and graduate student visa holders uh, they can be here for five years. Five years. Uh, and that is an extension from their existing arrangements that they would have now. Some of them would be some way into their current visa. They're already here, another five years. Um, those who are looking to the end of their study, and they would normally get two years, two years that will be extended. The other part is, of course, uh, through our Global Talent Program, to be uh, working with states and territories, and I'll be discussing this with states and territories. those jobs created here in Australia. Now, I want to stress that we are not expecting uh, large numbers of applicants um, in any time soon. Uh, what we uh, have in place is the normal application mechanisms for these visas. The same rules apply to getting a student visa. The same rules apply to getting a temporary work visa. The same market testing restrictions are in place in terms of labour market testing for the awarding of temporary skilled visas. All of that remains the same. What we are doing is extending uh, the opportunity uh, for those visas uh, out to five years in total and looking to uh, recruit, if you like, other businesses that may become footloose as a result 
of the changes that have occurred in Hong Kong. Um, and I imagine there will be many other countries in the region and around the world, indeed, that would be seeking uh, to attract those businesses to Australia and uh, talented applicants as well uh, as they make their own decisions about their, where they wish to live uh, in the future. Australia will be uh, part of that group of countries which will be both encouraging, welcoming and uh, taking steps to ensure we're actively engaged. And so with that, I'll hand it over to the Acting Minister for Immigration and many other things, um, Alan Tudge, and ask you to go through the details. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thanks very much, Prime Minister. As you'd be aware, Hong Kong has immense global talent and great businesses there, which, and we want to attract more of them to Australia, because that will generate more wealth and more jobs for Australians. Now, we already do very well in terms of attracting people from Hong Kong, but today we're outlining some further opportunities uh, for skilled people, for entrepreneurs, for significant investors and for businesses to come to our country. Let me go through some of the specific measures which the PM has touched on. Um, first up in relation to students. So the, the current and future students from Hong Kong will be eligible for a five-year temporary graduate visa on the successful conclusion of their studies, and that will come with a pathway for permanent residency. So former students who are already on a graduate uh, visa will have up to five years from now as well. Now, students who decide to study at a regional campus will be able to continue with the current regime where they can get permanent residency after three years. In relation to temporary skilled visas, um, current temporary skilled visa holders from Hong Kong and Australia will be eligible for an additional five years in Australia with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of that period. And that is about 600 people in Australia at the moment. Not a huge... Hong Kong applicants for temporary skilled visas will also be eligible for a five-year visa, provided they meet the existing criteria. Now, that is that you must fit with one of the uh, skills shortage criteria, and that list will be updated shortly, and it's going to be a significantly reduced list compared to what it is today. Um, of course, there'll need to be labour market testing as well from the sponsoring employer to prove that they are unable to find an Australian to do the job. Of course, a person can also qualify through the Global Talent Temporary Visa Scheme, which is really where we target the exceptionally talented people, particularly in the IT fields, um, to come here on a temporary basis um, if the employer particularly is willing to pay above um, the high income threshold. These future temporary skilled visa holders will also have a pathway to permanent residency after five years. Now, in relation to you know, what, what I call the, the super talent, um, of which there is many in Hong Kong, um, we started the Global Talent Scheme visa um, not that long ago with the idea of providing a permanent residency visa for the absolute super global talent. And we certainly know that there is some of that talent in Hong Kong and we will be uh, continuing with our program there, but we'll be prioritising applicants from Hong Kong for that scheme and providing some additional resources there as well to target those particular individuals who are real job multiplying people, who create businesses, who are entrepreneurs, who have that tech talent um, that the world is looking for, frankly. And they will then have a permanent residency visa to enable them um, to come into the country. That will be the same as well for our business uh, investment programs as well, where again we'll be prioritising some of the applicants um, from Hong Kong to come into Australia. Same criteria still applies for those applicants, uh, but they'll get priority if they're applying from Hong Kong. We'll also be supporting future applications, we'll be uh, reopening the visa uh, application centre in Hong Kong, um, which was shut down during the COVID-19 um, at the beginning of the COVID-19 period. Finally, just in relation to uh, attracting businesses from Hong Kong. As the PM mentioned, we'll be developing new incentives for uh, export-oriented Hong Kong-based businesses to relocate to Australia. 
And with these economic incentives will also be visa pathways for all critical staff to come to Australia and have a pathway to permanent residency. Now, we know that there are over 1,000 uh, international businesses who have their regional headquarters presently in Hong Kong. And we also know that many have already signalled that they're looking to relocate elsewhere in the world. And this includes media businesses, financial services businesses, large consulting businesses, which have already signalled they're looking elsewhere. And we want them to look to Australia to come to and set up shop. And so we'll be developing incentives for them to do so. But with that, a package of visas as well, so that all the critical staff can come and potentially relocate in one of our cities or a region um, and be able to get pathways to permanent residency. So that, I think, is a great opportunity for Australia. Um, these companies will be looking elsewhere, so we'll need to be competitive, um, but that's what we're going to be um, looking at um, and developing those incentives um, over, the, over the next uh, period of the next few weeks. Just, there is so much talent in Hong Kong. Um, there are great businesses on, in Hong Kong, and we know that many individuals now might be looking elsewhere because they do want to be in a freer country, they want to be in a democratic country, and we want to make it attractive for that super talent to consider Australia, and that's what these men. Thank you, Alan. Um, I should also stress that the refugee and humanitarian stream remains available for those who are seeking to apply through that channel, and that is available to people all around the world. Um, what we're announcing here today relates to uh, the existing components of our immigration program, and this will all be accommodated very comfortably uh, within the existing caps that we have on the overall uh, level of uh, visas for permanent residency into Australia, and that is particularly the case because of the significant decline uh, in intake that has occurred because of COVID, and we don't expect that to change uh, quickly. And so there is ample but I want to stress again, this is being done with continued strong labour market testing, and this is about creating jobs in Australia. Great. the extradition agreement with Hong Kong represents an acknowledgement of the fundamental change of circumstances um, in relation to Hong Kong because of the new security law, uh, which in our view, and this is not just our view, this is, I'd say, a shared view of many countries, um, of that uh, it undermines the one country, two systems framework and Hong Kong's own basic law and the high degree of autonomy guaranteed in the Sino-British Joint Declaration. Um, that was set out there and that is a, a, a matter of public record from Australia's point of view. What we are announcing here today, uh, both with the extradition agreement, there's an updating to our travel advice, but in particular what we're doing here in the visa arrangements is recognising that that has taken place. And so Australia is adjusting its laws, our sovereign laws, our sovereign immigration program, things that we have responsibility for and jurisdiction over um, to reflect the changes that we're seeing take place there.
Well, I'll be doing exactly what I said I was going to do yesterday. Tomorrow, I'll be taking a national cabinet a proposal that would ease the pressure on our points of entry, um, whether that's in Sydney or, or Perth or Brisbane or Adelaide in particular. Um, those four those four ports are the ones that are, are taking the majority, or all, I should say, of those um, re returning Australians. Uh, New South Wales, by far and away, the most. And... Um, all of this will be accommodated within those restrictions. And we are not anticipating um, a, a surge of arrivals as a result of this. I mean, the decision to relocate your life, your business, um, where you're going to study as a new applicant is a significant decision. It's not something that I'm sure people would, would do overnight. Um, the most significant impact of the decisions we've made today are for those around 10,000 people who are already in Australia. They're already here. They're studying. They're working. They're part of our community. They won't add one additional person to the population of Australia because they're already here. Uh, there's about, uh, I think, 3,000 or thereabouts, uh, Alan, about 3,500 uh, who are existing visa holders uh, in the areas I've, I've noted and the Minister has noted who are currently outside of uh, Australia and uh, they would uh, be able to return to Australia under those visas under the normal arrangements and that is within the restrictions that we've put in place. Well, we've put in place JobKeeper. We've provided JobSeeker. These are the supports that the government has provided, which are at record levels. This country has never seen a level of income support provided by a federal government like they're seeing now. And we will continue to provide that. I mean, during the course, of, particularly of these next six weeks, that is entirely within the current set of arrangements uh, for job seeker and for job keeper. And so that support will continue. And the support for placement, the Victorian government has also put some arrangements in place to support other members of the community, as other states have. And uh, this is a shared responsibility, and the Commonwealth is certainly doing overwhelmingly its share of the heavy lifting and providing in some income support to people all around the country. No, oh, I've answered the question.
put in your application. That needs to be processed. You need to get your affairs in order. For a permanent residency visa, that often takes six to nine months. For a temporary visa, that's sometimes shortened. Um, but I think you're talking in the, in the hundreds or low thousands um, rather than the figures which the PM mentioned. Yes. with your assessment um, of the nature of the travel advices that were being provided. I'll let the travel advice speak for itself rather than being um, uh, editorialised on. Um, and uh, those are matters entirely uh, for uh, the Chinese Communist Party government. They're not matters for Australia. We will make decisions about what's in our interests and we'll make decisions about our laws and our advisories and we will do that rationally and soberly and consistently and that's exactly what we've done and uh, we will continue to do that on that basis. Where 
experiencing right now. It would be surprising if we did not see that. But I think fundamentally, the structural position uh, of the housing markets in Australia um, would tell them a, a, a far more um, a stronger tale in, in terms of their, their resilience. Uh, and that's why I welcome particularly yesterday the uh, decisions by the banks uh, to be able to continue to roll over payments in relation to debts. That's important. That's one of the many um, changes that will very have been important to date and will be important later in the year. Um, and we're working through very similar issues. So I, I think it would be um, presumptive or, or, or a little premature is probably the better word, uh, to be making uh, medium or even short-term forecasts about the Australian property market at the moment. I think uh, we'll see issues work their way through. And uh, this is why it's important that we continue to deal with these crises as, as a dual uh, to that is economic and health. Getting on top of the health supports the economic um, performance and, and vice versa. And that's why around the rest of the country, uh, which isn't in isolation, it's important that we continue to open up our economies uh, between states and the trade and commerce that takes place between states and territories because that's how the jobs come back. When the jobs come back, uh, then the strength of markets, particularly housing markets, are supported by that. Uh, I'm encouraged that uh, in the housing markets in particular that those who have um, taken uh, advantage of the opportunity to draw down on their super balances, um, I'm advised by the banks that many have actually put it into their mortgages to improve their resilience in the mortgage, with their mortgage and in the housing market, and that strikes me as a fairly common sense thing to do. Well, I'll be discussing those matters with the National Capital tomorrow. Today, but I'm, I'm pleased that the ACD government um, have enabled my colleague to join me here today under quite strict conditions. Um, and we, I appreciate Andrew Buzz and the, the uh, Chief Health Officer here in the ACT's um, practical management of those issues, but there are still many more to manage. The Parliament doesn't return to August, so there's a bit to sort out between now and then, so we'll deal with those issues carefully. And there's a, uh, there is an engagement between the, our, the Parliament and, uh, and the ACT government about how those issues will be managed for the return of Parliament and indeed for ministers. Some ministers were already here um, when the uh, decision was taken in relation to Victoria, but their families are in Victoria, so there will need to be, I think, some practical arrangements put in place. So I can tell you, um, they will be very well behaved and they'll follow all the rules, as you'd expect them to, just as Minister Tudge has today. Thank you all very much.